The purpose of this exercise is to determine what gets printed out when this program is run. Take a few moments to work on this on your own. If you'd like to work on it in Lobster, this exercise is there as well. And I'll pause for a few seconds in order to give you a chance to pause the video and work on this before we talk about this together. All right, let's go ahead and look at this together. And often, for an exercise like this, it's useful to draw out a memory diagram to visualize what's happening in the program. So when the program starts up, the main function gets called, which means that we get a new activation record for main. And within that activation record, we have space for the parameters and local variables for this function. In this case, we have two local variables, foo and bar. So we get the memory object associated with foo within this activation record, and that gets placed at some address that's dependent on the machine. For us, we'll assume that foo gets placed at address 1000. We also have bar, which is also goes inside the activation record for main and also gets placed at some address. We'll assume that it gets placed at address 1004. Now, initially, the values that are within the memory locations for foo and bar are undefined. When the first line of code runs, that initializes foo to the value 1, which places the value 1 within the memory location for foo. On the second line, bar gets initialized to the address of the object foo. The actual value depends, again, on the machine wherever foo was placed. For us, because it was placed at address 1000, we get the address value 1000 inside of the memory location for bar. More importantly, this is the address of the foo object, and that is well defined. That will always be true no matter which machine we're on. Okay, so we visualize this by drawing a an arrow to the object whose address is stored inside of bar. So bar is pointing at the object associated with foo. Now on the next line, we assign the value 2 to the object associated with foo. So that means that instead of 1 being inside of that memory location, the value gets changed to the value 2. On the next line, we have another assignment, but the left-hand side of our assignment is star bar. And this dereferences bar, which means that we follow the pointer to the object it's pointing at. So we have the address value 1000 within bar, and so we go to the object at the address 1000. Visually, in terms of what we've drawn, what we do is we follow that arrow to the object that bar is pointing at, and that happens to be the foo object. And now we're setting the value of that object to 3, so the contents of that memory changes to the value 3. Moving on to the Couts, the first thing that we print out is the value of the variable foo, and as we can see in our diagram, that value is 3. The second thing that gets printed out is the value stored inside of the bar object. And so this was what was dependent on our machine. In our particular case, it happens to be the address value 1000. Finally, we print out the result of dereferencing bar, which means that once again, we follow the address located inside of bar to the object whose address that is. And again, that means that in our diagram, we follow our pointer to the object that it's pointing at, and that's the foo object, and its value is 3, so the value 3 gets printed out. Now, in terms of running this on a different machine, the ones, the outputs that we are guaranteed to get are the 3s when printing out foo and when printing out star bar. The address value that, that we get when we print out bar depends on wherever the machine place the object foo, but it will be the address of the foo object. 